Hi there, this is the second video accompanying the using the database step of the uh, Joomla tutorial developing an MVC component. In the first video we set up the database and now this video is associated with um, displaying the appropriate message on the site. Uh, just instantly, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video is that you see this hash here at the start of the table name. Uh, when you put that in, Joomla um, changes that to be the kind of standard prefix. So, for example, my database here, Joomla has got a prefix of VJ8E4, and Joomla will add that prefix to your table name. Now you don't have to use that. I mean it's just an ordinary database. You can call your table whatever you want. But it's worth it bearing in mind that uh, table names have to be unique in the database obviously. So if you think there's a danger of Joomla at some point in the future having a hello world table uh, within its functionality here, then if your component is called uses that um, table name, then you're going to be in difficulties. Uh, similarly, you want to avoid um, clashes with other developers or other components. So whenever you're designing your component and putting stuff in a database table, you need to try and think of something which is going to be unique for your component, as you do also for your, your component name. <clears throat> So maybe having something which doesn't involve the hash, but which is something um, specific to you, is going to be maybe a bit more appropriate. However, that's by the by. Let's get uh, working on the uh, the step of um, oops of displaying the right message. Now, you remember in a previous step we set up these menu items and gw was the last one goodbye world and we saw here that this is the sort of link that is going to be um, uh, given to the code at the far end so it's going to be id equals two and in our current code we're picking off id two and setting the message to be goodbye world is hard coded there what we want to do now obviously is get the id and instead of outputting it as a case statement we need to look into the database to find the appropriate message and output that <coughs> so let's go down to our code and this is the part here we're going to be looking at display the chosen message and you'll notice down here that it uses um, something called JTable. <clears throat> and if we look up the documentation on JTable, uh, Joomla has got a description of the JTable class. And you see here the JTable class is an implementation of the active record design pattern um, for creating, reading, updating, and deleting basically CRUD tasks for records in the database table. So if you think of it in pictorial terms, um, you have got JTable, or really more accurately, you have an instance associated with your, um, your Hello World JTable class, which inherits from the base JTable uh, class. And then on the one side, you've got the database table, and on the other side, you've got your code. So this is sort of like an intermediary, this instance of your class, which inherits from JTable. And there are a number of methods which are associated with this instance, with this class. Some of these kind of swap data between the instance and our own code. Some of them swap data between the database table and the instance. But it's worth bearing in mind that these CRUD operations work on a single record. So it's it doesn't have 
um, methods, for example, like all or find, which allow you to put in a query uh, to get multiple records, it's not that sophisticated. You find those in some other active record sorts of uh, implementations, but this really works only in a single record. Um, now, in our case, we're looking to get an ID and get the message associated with that ID. So it works fairly well, but if it's something more complicated, JTable isn't the sort of implementation you're going to want to use. So let's look at our code. Here we have two things here. First of all, down here is where we have got our implementation of the JTable class. So we will have to do this so that we get an instance which is associated with our Hello World um, table. And the first thing we need to do is to find a construct there. Now you go to Joomla. Joomla has got an API definition. There's one for JTable. And if we look at the construct and see that we should be passing mixed properties equals null. And goodness, what on earth does that mean? Uh, well, it doesn't really mean a lot. But if you actually go to the Joomla table, JTable within the GitHub repository, here is the class j table and you go down to the construct or the constructor here is the signature that you want to use table name the key the primary key of that table it may be a single field or it may be a composite table uh, and the database handle uh, and unfortunately you do find it in joomla that not all the, the documentation can be a bit ropey or lacking at times and sometimes you just have to go to the code and find out what is going on. So if we go back to our table code, I'm going to take this and copy it and we're going to put this into a new file. And Joomla will expect this to be in a certain directory. Admin tables hello world.php. Admin, now we need to create tables. PHP. Okay. And because we've created a new folder here, we're going to need to tell the manifest file about that new folder. And somewhere it should be. Here we are here. Okay, we've already got version six on this. And then our other file is our model file. So what are we doing here then? Um, we're getting the ID just as before. They were then calling this stop gate table, which is really just a, a get table method in our own class here, which is this. And in this, we're returning jtable get instance. So if we go to our jtable documentation, we can go down to get instance and find what we should be passing there. The name of the jtable class, a prefix for the class, and any configuration.
after we get that J table class, we then do a table load, passing in the ID. And we can go to load and see what that does. Method to load a row from the database by the primary key and bind the fields to the J table instance properties. So it's basically saying that we can now access that. This is table. Table.greeting actually contains greeting, which is associated with this ID. So we just plug that into our messages array and return that. So let's, let's copy that text. I think it might be just easier to copy the whole file. So, Okay, that's that. Now let's try zipping it up and installing this. We've already got version 6. We're going to call this 6B. Close that. Okay, so this is our site part here. This is what was um, done previously. We saw goodbye with the space in the middle. Um, we have got this menu item here, which is associated with this menu item over here. So that should give us an ID of two, and hopefully it's going to go to the database and find that what is uh, the message associated with ID of two, and I put it there. Let's try that. Successful. You'll notice there's no space in there because we took out the space whenever we put it into the database. Now, when we tried this before, we also had a hello world, which was done from a previous step, which didn't have a ID in, you may remember. So this one's here. And if we look at it, there's no ID there. So let's go ahead and try and see what happens with this. Hello world. Well, that was actually successful. Let's check why that is. And in our model, we have done this get and we've passed the default. So if there's no ID in the menu item that comes through, we pass a default of one. What we also did was we looked at um, putting through an ID of three. So let's see if we can remember how to do that. There it is there. You are here, home. Okay, so there's no message that has been output here because Obviously, when it's gone to the database and it's tried to access it with ID3, there's been no message in that and it's just put out something blank. Okay, that's it for this step. In the final step, we're going to be looking at the admin aspect. Thanks for watching.